Your wardrobe is full of polymers. There are natural polymers like cotton and wool, and there are synthetic polymers, which we're going to look at now. So if you look in the labels of your clothing, these are the names you'll find of polymers. So you have nylon, spandex, polyester, and PVC. So what is a polymer? A polymer is a large molecule made by linking together repeat units of smaller units called monomers. So the red thing here is the polymer and the green thing is the monomer. Polymerization. There's two times. The first one's addition and there's three ways you can do this. Free radical, cationic and anionic. It is also known as chain polymerization and it usually uses alkenes. For example, I'm going to use here is PVC. Now the other type of polymerization is condensation polymerization and this is things like polyamides and polyesters and in these cases a small molecule of water or something similar like potentially HCl is eliminated as the polymer is formed. Okay so the first one we're going to look at is nylon. So now a really common nylon is nylon 6 sets and here I'm drawing out a unit of the polymer so that's, that will be repeated over and over and here are the monomers so we have a dicarboxylic acid and a diamide and they all have the same number of carbons which is six hence the six six okay so there's lots of different varieties of nylon and i'm just going to write a whole bunch of them down here so where there's two it's like a, one's a carboxylic acid one's an amide and when there's one, it's a carboxylic acid on one side and an amide on the other side of the molecule. So here I'm just showing you what the numbers mean. So the number of carbons in the, that molecule. I've got six. So six is most commonly used for tights. And it's the way it's woven and you get this stretchy thing. Now nylon is also used for the shell of coats. It can, depending on the weave, it can be waterproof. And it's very different to the nylon you find, the way the nylon is in tights. So now PVC is an addition polymer. And I'm going to quickly show you how this is done by free radical. So E is just any random radical. The dot means it's a radical. And it splits up the double one. One electron from each other, the double one goes across. And you form this radical. And this radical behaves the same way as other radicals, but attaching onto another double bonded molecule. And this will keep going until you have a really long chain. And this is called propagation, this part. Now then termination, can, which is the ending of it, can happen in two ways. The first way is when you have two polymers and the radicals just each on each electron and form a bond. Okay, and the second method is when the radical on one attacks the hydrogen on the other. And then the, high, the electrons from that bond, radical from the carbon on the other side, form a double bond. And you lose the hydrogen and that goes, so you have one polymer and one which has got a double bond at the end. And then PVC is used to make fake leather, latex and rubber like things. And you can see here in this sheet, this is, um, so it's got high sheen and it's also waterproof. So it's used for coats, shoes and bags most commonly. You can also get PVC trousers. Okay, so polyester is not actually what it's actually called. It is actually poly, ethyl terephthalate, or PET. So it's the inside of your coat is often fur on coat is often making PET. So here is one unit of the monomers are dicarboxylic acid and a dialcohol how are these polymers made into the fabrics that you so they aren't going to work like this you could coat with just a pile of polymers so what they do is they're made into fibers and they're made into fibers using a method called spinning and the spinning the polymer is turned into the fluid state so it's either melted or treated with chemicals to make it liquid and it's then forced through a piece of machinery called a spinneret and that forms the fiber it is then cooled and if necessary anything it's been dissolved in is 
let removed and then it solidifies to form the fibre. So then once you've made the fibre you obviously weave it and you weave it in the same way as you would a natural fibre like cotton. Um, now there are loads of different ways you can weave and there's show you some three of the basic ones for nylon which will sort of show how you get the different textures with tights and with the coat. Affeta. And this is a basic weave, so it's under, over, under, over, under, over. The next one is the Oxford weave, and this is when you have two strands together, but it's still under, over, under, over, under, over, but with two strands instead of one. And then the final one is the satin weave, which is a lot more complex. It goes like over three, under one, over two type affeta. It's very, very strong. It's your basic weave and it's very stable. Oxford is a rough, much rougher finish and satin is a very lustrous finish. So just a few uses of them. The taffeta is used for windbreakers, like a raincoat. It's used for the lining of coats and it's used for wind socks like you see in uh, near airfields. Oxford is used for athletic jackets that you run in, um, banners, flags, tote bags you carry around. So nylon, satin jackets are what the satin weave is used for and sometimes it's used for banners. Synthetic polymers are often used over natural polymers as they're really cheap and they're more readily available than things like silk. So nylon is used in some cases as a replacement to silk. So it's obviously a lot cheaper and it also can be waterproof. So it provides very lightweight waterproof clothing instead of heavy, thick things that people would have worn in the past. PVC provides a vegan friendly alternative to leather as well as the fact that tanning leather can produce a lot of chemicals so it's a safer way to get the leather that people want and polyester provides an entirely new material that can be used for things like coat linings and such. Polymer fabrics for the future now there's not many new fabrics being developed currently but there is a lot of technology where you're adding things from other branches of science like nanotechnology where you're adding silver particles into pyjamas to create sterile pyjamas for patients in hospitals as well as more fun ones where you've got LED lights woven into fabrics so at the flick of a switch your dress can change from one colour to another. Thank you for watching. Um, all the references are in the description box below if you are interested. Thank you. Bye.